Hello, I'm Tyler, and I'm part of the Tiny News Collective. We're a new group designed to provide the tools, resources, and common wealth of knowledge to help people build sustainable news organizations that reflect and serve their communities. I'm leading the technology effort at the Tiny News Collective. Today, I'm going to demo the technology we've built to support founders in building their news business from the ground up. But first, I'd like to tell you briefly about the project. Our vision is this a world where everyone can participate in creating relevant, accurate, and culturally conscious local news and information is one where everyone can more fully engage in civic life, make more informed decisions, and better understand the world around them. We offer three platforms of support for new founders. A founder platform built to provide hands-on training on everything you need to know to run a tiny news business with a community of support to help you every step of the way. An operations platform to help with payroll, legal advice, and more. And finally, a technology platform designed to remove all the confusion, complexity, and cost of designing your first tech stack from scratch. I'll be talking more in depth about our technology platform today. At the beginning of our design process, we interviewed founders of tiny news websites that already exist in the world about the barriers they faced establishing their organizations. We heard a lot about technology. It's too hard to decide what technology to use, it's too hard to learn how to use it, and it's all just too expensive. We set out to fix that by offering a complete publishing platform at the lowest price we could manage. For our Fosco horde of founders, everything offered by the Tiny News Collective is available for $100 per month. Before I demo our stack, I want to mention that applications to become part of the Tiny News Collective are open at the time of this video and will be open until April 11th. We have a detailed guide to applying available at tinynewsco.org slash guide to applying. You can also head to tinynewsco.org slash application for the full application. Our technology platform covers drafting, editing, and publishing articles, publishing newsletters and email list management, comments and engagement tools, donation and CRM software, direct local advertising, analytics, and more. The basic process works like this. Content creators draft and edit in a tool many know and love, a Google Doc. We provide a custom add-on that publishes that document to a secure database through Hazura. We also provide a complete website that comes pre-configured with the best web best practices around Google Analytics, comments enabled via the Coral Project, a donation platform CRM and accounting suite integrated through MonkeyPod, and direct local advertising from Letterhead. We also use Letterhead for newsletter publishing powered by MailChimp on the back end so you can monetize your newsletter with the same local advertising that powers your website. In this video, I will demo an early pre-alpha version of how this all works. Before we start, I need to say that most things in this video are liable to change before we launch. We still have work to do before we finish this platform. Let's start with the publishing process. A common thread in our interviews with news founders centered on the difficulty of migrating stories from a Google Doc to their CMS of choice. People spent hours of their lives copying and pasting, re-uploading images, and filling out metadata after all the real work was already done. We thought we could simplify this process by bringing the CMS to your Google Doc instead. So here, we have a standard Google Doc. We're using the native headers feature. As you can see here, we have a subhead set as heading two, and we have some other subheads set as heading three. We're also uploading images natively to the Google Doc, and we can even use the alt text feature to populate captions in alt text. We are linking uh, using Google standard Google Docs links, bolding, italicizing, we can even embed things like tweets and YouTube videos just by putting the link in its own paragraph. So there's no special markup here. You're able to just write like you would normally write in a Google Doc and use all the features you're familiar with. So we have a complete story here and we're ready to publish. The way we do that is by going to the add-ons menu and selecting our Tiny News add-on. The way this is installed is all members of the Tiny News Collective will receive a Google Workspace account associated with their domain name. We will automatically install our add-on to that Google Workspace account, and you will have access to use this add-on as a part of your standard Google Doc setup. So let's open our publishing tools. You can see we populate a sidebar here on the side with our publishing tools. And when it loads, we see all the, all the fields you might come to expect as a part of a standard CMS. We have our headline, we can assign authors. Uh, we can uh, also override those authors with a custom byline. We can categorize our story. We have tags. Um, so I can call this New Jersey, 
and bikes. And also, um, this is about Collingswood. So I'm going to add Collingswood as a new tag, uh, which I can do right here natively in the sidebar. We can also configure search, Facebook, and Twitter metadata so that the stories can appear differently across those networks and you can optimize for your audiences where they are. So once we have all of this ready to go, we're ready to publish. I'm going to click publish here. And what's happening is we are collecting all of the information in this Google Doc, plus all the information we've entered in the sidebar and sending it to our database uh, through an API we built with Hazura. What this means is that even though you're writing and editing in Google, in your Google Doc and in Google Drive, we're not actually relying on Google Docs and Google Drive to host your content. We store everything separately in a database that we own. So if something were to happen to Google in the future or you lose your Google Doc, we still have all of your content available for you. So we published the article. Let's click to view and take a look at what happened. So as you can see here, we've pulled all of that metadata, including our headlines, our categories, our descriptions. Uh, we were able to associate published dates, pulled out our main image at the top of the story, bylines, and then we have bolded text, italicized text, uh, our embedded tweet, um, we have our image caption, we have uh, advertising injected into the story um, through letterhead, uh, we have our subheads, we have our lists, we have our links, and then once you finish the story, we're able to inject a newsletter subscribe block. And this is an area where we're going to be able to do some interesting things with audience segmentation through our Google Analytics setup. So if we uh, will be tracking uh, users of the website in a few different ways, uh, we'll know whether they are a subscriber to your newsletter, we'll know whether they've donated to your website, and we'll know how often they're reading your articles. Based on that information, we'll be able to configure what appears across the site, including in this box. So if we know that they're a newsletter subscriber, for example, we can repopulate this box with uh, an ask for donations instead. If they're reading frequently, uh, but haven't subscribed to the newsletter, perhaps we can also push them to donate since it seems like they've seen the newsletter prompt a bunch and aren't going to act to sign up. So it's better to get them to do something that might get them to actually engage with uh, some of your revenue opportunities. We also have our tags here and then we populate uh, recirculation um, so that we can keep users going around your website. We'll also have comments from the Coral project here that they're not turned on at the moment. So that's our story page. Um, let's take a look at our home page. So as you can see at the top, we actually don't have our story here at the top. Um, but if we uh, refresh the page here, we've got uh, our story here below the fold. And that's because we have the ability to pin stories to the top of our home page um, through some software we've built called the Tiny CMS. Um, the Tiny CMS allows you to configure certain pieces of the website, such as, of course, what stories are featured at the top of your page, various micro text, such as if you want to say, uh, become a member instead of donate on these buttons, what your donation prompts look like, what your subscription prompts looks like, uh, your typography and color options, all of that is configurable via the Tiny CMS. Um, so let's take a look at what's available in the Tiny CMS. Um, First, let's go to our homepage editor and feature our new story. So here we see a, a quick preview of our homepage. I can change what article is featured by searching for it. I'm going to select it. And now here's our new story that we just published. I'm going to save and publish that. And then I'll go back to our homepage and give it a few refreshes until we get our new homepage. Here we are. Uh, and we've just changed our homepage. The other thing we can do with our homepage, if I go back to the tiny CMS, is change the actual layout of the featured section. So this is called big featured story, but we also have one called large package story layout. And this allows us to put three, three different stories at the top. So I can bring back our Cooper River story and a story we wrote about Philadelphia. So here is, um, our large package story layout. Let's publish that. And then we'll go back here 
Again, refresh a couple times. And here is our new layout. Other things we're doing on this homepage, again, we're injecting advertising from letterhead. Uh, we have a few different ad types, so we're able to support uh, homepage ads with this longer text, as well as the smaller advertising units we saw on the article page. We'll have banner ads available as well that you can uh, put at the top of your page across your website. Um, there are a few other pages on this website that you would expect to see, such as category pages and author pages, um, tag pages as well. Um, but that's most of what the website offers. Uh, let's take a look at some of the other things we can change in the tiny CMS. If I go to our metadata section, you can see I can customize um, our color scheme. Uh, we have a few predefined right now, but we'll be uh, supporting custom colors as well. And then we have a few typography options as well. Um, we can adjust our newsletter prompt. So if I wanted to say sign up instead of subscribe, I can do that. Um, so let's do that and submit. And then go back to our homepage and let's watch this box. Um, again, it will take a little bit. There we are. There's our new newsletter prompt. And uh, the rest of the site kind of relies on some third parties. Um, so we'll have uh, these, these pages. We'll link to uh, donation pages hosted on MonkeyPod. Um, newsletters, again, provided through Letterhead. So you'll have a authoring interface in Letterhead for you to write your newsletters that will automatically inject some of the same advertising we've been seeing on this website. Um, and that's about it. So uh, I hope you learned about the Tiny News Collective tech stack as it stands right now. Uh, we'll be continuing to work on this uh, as we collect applications for our first cohort. Again, tinynewsco.org slash application. Uh, applications are open until April 11th. Um, thank you. And please apply for the Tiny News Collective or reach out with any questions. Thank you.